What's up everyone, this is Austin here from Make Pop Music and Austin Hall Audio, and today we are back with another video. And for today's video, I wanted to talk about five new plugins that I think are actually worth the money. As a lot of you probably know, it is plugin season, Every developer under the sun is releasing new plugins, new presets, new sample packs, and that's all good and well, but I know that it can get kind of overwhelming, especially if you're looking to just pick up a couple things this holiday season. So I figured I would make this video as a little cheat sheet and show you five things that I personally really, really like, five brand new plugins, and five things that I think are probably worth investing in, or at least checking out. With that said, just because something's not on this list doesn't mean it's not a good plugin, it doesn't mean I don't like it. I may have not either tried it, or it's just something that I might already have a tool for. So definitely go check out everything that everybody's releasing because this is a really exciting time for the year. I know sales are going to be coming up, so definitely go check out everything. I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown of five of my personal favorites. With that said, as some of you may know, Make Pop Music is releasing a couple new things in the next couple weeks, but we'll have more details on that next week. Neither of our upcoming packs will be in this video. I wanted to focus specifically on whole plugins and third-party plugins. So let's go ahead and hop into Cubase so I can show you around five of my favorite plugins at the moment and five new plugins that I think are worth you actually purchasing and checking out. All right, now we're in Cubase. What I want to do is I want to show you each plugin, give you a couple details about the plugin, and then show you a couple instances of that plugin in action. So let's go ahead and start with the first plugin that I think is actually worth buying. It's a brand new plugin by Eventide and it is called Split EQ. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this is, what it does, and how to kind of utilize this. So some information about this, this is by Eventide. This is kind of an EQ, but what you can do is you can actually EQ the transients and the tonal information of a sound separately. So say you have something like a snare drum and there's a tonal ring, but you kind of want to keep the transient there rather than just EQing it down or multiband compressing it down. This is a really cool tool. So it's not really working like a dynamic EQ because it's not based on like attack and release time for the actual EQ band. It's more so got specific controls for transient and tonal uh, purposes. So I'm going to kind of show you an example. I believe this plugin right now, it's at an intro price of $99. I'm not sure what it will be when you're actually watching this video, but there will be links to all of these in the description below and none of them are affiliate links, um, at least not at this moment. If they are, they'll have an asterisk by them. But anyway, so here is the plugin. This is what the interface kind of looks like. It just kind of looks like a parametric EQ. I've got some stuff going on here and then you can see that we have uh, like a low pass and a high pass filter over here. And then we have six individual bands that you can control. You can make them shelves, peaks, notches, um, very similar to most kind of parametric graphic interfaces like this. But where this gets really specific is let me show you the example and kind of what we're doing. So we have, let me just go to a B version where this is just kind of like completely reset. So this is pretty close to how it'll be when you load it up. And then uh, here's the sound that we have this on. So it's a really cool sample. There's a lot of room in this and it was something that in the mix I felt was kind of getting in the way. So what I did is I made a version of this where I'm pulling up the transient so we're getting a little bit of that knock, but I'm also pulling down this kind of tonal ring. So you can hear this right here. And what I can do is I can actually solo this so you can really hear what's going on. So let's go ahead and solo the transient. Here's the tonal. And so you can hear that I'm just pulling out a little bit of that ring in that area while adding a little bit of transient to give me that initial pop. This is something I wouldn't be able to do with kind of a, a standard or even a dynamic EQ. These are things that really need to have their own specific controls. This plugin actually goes a little bit farther because you can also control things like the Q for each individual one, or you can do them together. You can also you know, control how much you want to increase the transient or decrease the transient and the tonal. So um, I'm going to pull it back up here. But in addition to EQ, you've also got things like pan control. So you can pan these transients and these tonal elements separately, or you can put it into mid side and get full control over everything. So this works really nice on specific bands like this, but it works really well as just kind of a transient designer because you have this kind of master transient and this master tonal over here. So say you have something like a pluck, but the pluck is too transient and you want to kind of make it more like a pad. You can easily just pull the transients down and pull the tonal up. 
And uh, what you can do is, is you can just go a little bit beyond something like a transient designer or something like an EQ or a gate. And this kind of serves the function of all of those different things. So that's what this is doing on this little um, reverbed uh, rim hit. And I wanted to make it a lot smaller because in the whole mix, it was just way too much. We also did something similar with this synth right here. This is just a, uh, let me disengage this. This is what it sounds like. But I wanted to dry that up a little bit, make the pluck a little bit more transient and take away some of that kind of mid resonance because this kind of four, like 250 to kind of like five, 600 area can really, really build up a lot of nastiness in a mix. But I kind of need that, you know, transient element there to still kind of poke through. So in the mix, we have this little guy that uh, ends up becoming a star once we add this on. And I think split EQ is just a really, really nice tool for like repairing sounds. You can do things like DSing with this. You can do things like um, controlling transients and tonal stuff. You can do mid side processing where you have transient and tonal stuff. So I'll probably use this a lot for repair and then general mixing, but I also kind of want to use this creatively as a sound design tool just to give me uh, a little bit different scope of something like a normal uh, EQ or a normal transient designer or a normal um, kind of modulation widening effect would give me. So definitely go check that one out. That one's really exciting, but let's go ahead and let's move on to the next one. The second plugin I want to talk about is Murda Melodies by Slate. You've probably seen a lot about this plugin already. People keep comparing it to RC20. I guess it's kind of the same vibe because it's like a multi-channel, like multi-effects kind of thing, but I don't find this nearly as lo-fi driven. This seems to be a lot more polished and a lot brighter and um, a little bit more modern, where I think RC20 is great for if you want that kind of lo-fi vintage sound with the things like the tape and the noise and all of the different distortion effects. But Murda Melodies, I think, is just a really nice tool to kind of enhance your sound. So let me show you uh, an example of what we're kind of using it on. So we have this sound right here, and this is just right out of the box. So it is a cool sound, but I wanted to add a little bit. So you've got tons of controls on this. You've got things like spread, you have dimension here, you have motion. So your dimension is gonna be like a pretty even kind of wide chorus. You've got this movement, which is acting more of like a, like a quicker chorus, almost like a, like a flanger kind of thing. And then you have your ice right here, which is just a really nice icy shimmery reverb. You've got some saturation. I love this control. This is a reverse control, which will actually reverse the sound back into itself. We've got rhythm, which is just delay. We have clarity, which is just top end. And we have ensemble, which is gonna be like kind of creating more voices. You also have kind of master high pass and low pass filters here. And you have a wobble here if you wanna add that kind of like jittery tape effect. And then you've also got pitch jitter and you can control, you know, if you wanna transpose the whole thing up or down. It's got a little mix knob right here. And let me show you what this preset got transformed into once I have added this instance. So I'm spreading it out, I'm washing it out, I'm adding a little bit of that reverse, I've got a little bit of that shimmer and that heat in there. And it, to me, it just helps that sound a lot more interesting. Let me find another example. Here we go, we have another example where I'm using Murder Melodies. Let me show you what this sounds like before. Let me show you what this sounds like if I drive this up a little bit. As you can see, there's a lot of things that you can control, but it's so easy to get around. Um, really, really easy interface to use. And it's got most of the multi effects that I like to use when I'm doing things like synth design or background vocal design or like percussion design. 
it has most of the things just put into one plugin. So it's one of those things that I'm just going to steadily go grab and it's included in their all access bundle anyway. So if you already have that, it doesn't cost anything. If you don't have the all access bundle, it's just one more cool little plugin to kind of incentivize you to go grab that. So I highly suggest checking out Murder Melodies, especially if you already have the bundle. Other than that, let's move on to example number three. All right, the third plugin I'm really into right now is called Dynamo. It's by UJAM. And basically what this is, is this is just like a crazy glitch, multi-effects, delay, reverb processing unit that kind of does everything under the hood. And um, it's really cool just for taking a sound and making it absolutely insane. It's not like murder melodies where you have control over every single element and you can kind of fine tweak everything and just kind of, you know, spice your stuff up. This is if you want to actually demolish something. So uh, this plugin, I believe, is $99. You can get it from the UJAM website, but they do have, I think, a 30-day trial, um, either 14-day or 30-day. It'll say on their website. But you can try this one out before you buy it. And uh, you can see right here, it's got some presets. We've got intros. We've got track presets, drum presets. And then you've also got your individual kind of like modes right here. So you've got remix, solo, rhythm, sustain, vocal. You can flip through all of these. And then on every preset, you've got a pattern right here. This has halftime. This has uh, poly, standard, triplet, and double time. So we'll go back to halftime for this one. You have a tone control right here, which is kind of like a master EQ filter. And then you have your finisher knob, which is kind of like a dry wet. And then every plugin will have different knobs for knob two and knob three. And those will just kind of change uh, depending on whatever that plugin is doing. So let me go ahead and show you what this sounds like with and without. So here is without Dynamo. But since I have that for an intro, I wanted something a little bit more interesting. So what I did is I engaged this, operated some of the knobs and filters. And this is cool because it's something that you have a little bit of control over, but it's not something that you can get lost in forever, just constantly tweaking. It's kind of like you load it up, you find something that feels like a happy accident, and then you kind of leave it there. And this is just something to kind of take your ear candy and your sound design to the next level. I also did it on a hat. It'll be a lot easier to hear what's going on on this because it's not such a kind of sustained uh, pad. But here's what the hat sounds like with nothing on it. And let's go ahead and turn on Dynamo. So what I did is I have a resequencer here and then I've got the occasional glitch model right here. And then you can see that I've got the chaos at 73, the stutter at 58, the finisher is at 100, we're at a halftime pattern, and the tone is just negative nine. So let's go ahead and hear what all of those little controls do to this hi-hat. And what's gonna happen is as we change that, you'll get different things. So let's go to Screamer. So as you see, this plugin can go from slight little, you know, ear candy, cool little glitchy additions to absolutely mangling a sound. So this is going to be something really cool for creating intros and outros. This will be something cool for creating little instrumental sections that tie parts together and just taking something like a generic hat or a generic little synth sound and putting a ton of different ear candy and spice on that. So um, they have a really, really funny, good video on their channel that actually shows everything about this. But in short, this is just a cool plugin to load up, find some happy accidents, give your sound a little bit of extra pizzazz, and it's something that, you know, unlike murder melodies, this is completely uh, random feeling. So you don't really ever know what you're going to get, you kind of just flip through. Where murder melodies is really good if you have an idea of how you want to kind of process your your own thing with like multi effects. Let's talk about plugin number four. This plugin is called Scorch. It's by a company called Sauceware Audio. And I actually saw this from a bunch of YouTube reviews and uh, it's a really, really cool plugin. It's a small company. This is, I think, their second plugin. And what this is, is this is basically like a synthesizer rompler where they've recorded a bunch of sounds and then kind of put them in this interface. So I'll kind of show you around the interface. Every synth sound that you've heard in this video so far has actually been from Scorch. So there's just, you know, a little bit of like hearing it in the actual mix. 
But you can see right here, you've got all of your different sounds. You've got combo sounds, piano and keys, synth pads, uh, synth keys, guitars, plucks, organs, all that kind of good stuff. And then what's really cool is that every plugin kind of has this, it almost looks like a big red eye, like a, the core of the universe. And it's just got like, I think it's 12 different uh, presets that are designed that kind of do something similar to like what Dynamo was doing, where it's kind of like random effects and glitches and stuff like that. But it's just baked right into the plugins. Let me actually play this so I can show you around. So here it is. So let me go ahead and actually kind of show you through some of the, the graphic interface and show you through, you know, some of the presets that they have on here. So this is not really like a dry wet knob, this is more like a try different things knob. And then down here, I would say that my only kind of gripe about this is these are kind of hard to read, at least for me. So I would say with the interface, you know, maybe on a version two, they could just simplify this a little bit. But um, you have all kinds of different controls right here. You've got fade, hold, density, stereo, random. You can turn this on or off. And then you do have a delay right here. You do have a filter right here and you have some LFOs and stuff that you can do. If we click off, you also have your ADSR. Like I said, this is a rompler, so you're not gonna have like a ton of um, customization effects for the actual sounds. So really all you need to do is flip through and find some presets that you like and then flip through the different variations of this. And then you can just go through and you can actually um, you know, do your effects however you need on here. So let me go ahead and show you some of these sounds. So I showed you this one as we flip through. We've also got this sound. Let me turn Dynamo off. We also have this example. We also have this example. So this is a really cool plugin, especially if you wanna go through and post process. I just like supporting smaller companies and it's always kind of cool to find a synth that not everybody's gonna have. So if you're looking for a rompler that's just got some cool sounds, some different sounds, and especially if you like that little red eye in the middle that you can kind of crank and get those multi effects, Scorch is really cool. Like I said, I think it's $99. They do have a money back guarantee. I don't think they have a trial, um, but there'll be a link to check that out in the description. And then yeah, pretty much everything in here is Scorch. I've been calling you And let's talk about the last plugin of this video. This plugin is called Rezo. It's by a company called Mastering the Mix. And it's pretty similar to a lot of the, you know, big plugins that you've been seeing that are like kind of resonance retainers. This is what the plugin looks like. As you play something, it'll have this graphic interface right here. So what's really cool is this is basically just gonna act as kind of a resonance tamer. So if you see a resonance like right here, this is a pretty big one, you can just double click and then you can drag it up or down. You can control the Q and uh, let's see what it kind of does. We'll drag it all the way down so it's pretty drastic. There's another one kind of right here. Maybe we drag that down. And now I'm absolutely mangling these. I wouldn't do that this big in the mix, but since this is such a resonant sound, doing this where you know you kind of control some of these right here is really nice. I've been losing the time because I'm not really getting sleep. So that's how you manually add points. You just have to find the resonances, double click, and then you can drag them up or down. But what's really cool about this is, let me go ahead and uh, reset this. You can actually calculate your target. So if you don't know where to, where to put them or you want it to just find its own nodes, all you have to do is let it play through and then you can hit calculate targets. Once it's calculated its targets, it'll show you kind of everything that you've got going on. You can hit engage targets. And then what it's actually gonna do is create little nodes for every single issue that it found. And you can still change these, like you can change how drastic you want them. 
I have them all kind of grouped, but you can do them individually. And uh, now let's play the sound. Just nice for getting rid of some of those resonant uh, kind of notes that are kind of annoying. And uh, in the whole mix, it can be really, really nice, especially on things like synths. If you have a really kind of resonant note in a vocal or in like a snare drum, it can be really cool for that. But let's go ahead and kind of, we kind of did the same thing on this vocal here. I've been calling your phone every night just to hear it read. Here's without it. I've been losing the time because I'm not really getting sleep. And we've done this one a little bit more subtle. It's still pretty drastic, but in the whole mix, this actually makes a pretty big difference. I've been calling your phone every night just to hear it ring. I've been losing the time because I'm not really getting sleep. And Rezo is just a really good tool to kind of poke everything right into a mix. It's super easy to use and it's pretty flexible. It's not going to have as many uh, features and kind of graphic interface options as something like Sooth 2, but this plugin is a lot less expensive. I think right now it's $58 and they do have a trial. So if you want to go try that, try that out. I think at the moment Rezo is 58 bucks. All right, and there you have it. Those are the five plugins that are newly released that I'm pretty excited about. I think they're worth going and checking out. Download a demo, download a trial. Like I said, most of these either have a demo or if not, they at least have some kind of money back guarantee. So there's really nothing to be lost. I listed all of the current prices in this video, but as you know, we are coming up on Black Friday and the holiday season. So if you wanna keep an eye out for sales, definitely go check these out in the next couple weeks. But other than that, that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions about any of the plugins we talked about, let us know in the comments down below and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Like I said, this video was not affiliated or sponsored or anything by any of these companies. These are just great companies that have, you know, either given me something to check out or that I've actually purchased with my own money that I legitimately do like and I will be using on tons of mixes and productions. So hopefully this video helped. Hopefully these are new tools that you can go check out. Like I said, next week we'll be talking a little bit more about upcoming make pop music packs. But other than that, we'll see you guys next time. Much love everyone. Peace.